Okay, for today's uh, warm up, you're doing the redaction action. Um, this program is an example of a coding exercise you'll soon create. So what you need to do is run the solution in the assignment panel on the right side of the screen. And I want you, as you run it, to think about these things up here on the screen. And you should go ahead and pause the video so that you can run through that and then you can come back when you are done. Make sure you hit submit. Okay, and as you come back, you're going to want to get your Canvas ePortfolio open so that you can <clears throat> add some vocab. Um, we are looking at str strings as collections. We're very familiar with strings at this point. Besides printing them out, what else can we do with them in our programs? So remember that they can be used to track a non-numeric state um, because input always comes in as a string. So in this lesson, we're going to learn how to work with strings in a new way by treating them as a collection. So we're going to start with a simple word game. And our goal is going to be to create as many words as we can using those letters. You can only use a letter twice if it appears in the list twice. Um, so you'll want to get something to write down or type this down with. And I'm going to, um, when I finish, I'll set a timer and you can see what you come up with. Um... All right, here are your letters. You guys will have one minute to come up with as many as possible. Oh, sorry, two minutes. Let me change that. A little more than halfway there. All right, time is up. So, um, if we look at these, 
Um, here are some sample words that can be made from the letters that were provided. To prove that we're not missing any letters or using them more times than we need to, <clears throat> we are going to look at each letter's index in the list. So you can see that each word has an index from, well, we'll start with the original shuffled version, 0 through 9. And then as we look at each one and we line it up, align it with the index of the shuffled ones, um, we can show that we're not missing letters or using them more times than we need to, okay? So um, you have spiral, drips, sets, plaids, I'm, or plaid rather, and I'm sure that you came up with several more, um, but here you have the corresponding indexes that go with it. So in Python, strings are actually a type of collection, just like lists. Like other collections, they can be treated as a group of values instead of just one single value. This means we can do a bunch of collection operations with them including finding individual values within the string using indexes. So we're going to look at a, uh, and explore a sample program um, based on some string operations. Um, and you are going to want to try to print the length of the user's word, change the minimum required length for an animal name, and allow the user to reuse a letter as long as the animal starts and ends with the same letter. So we are looking at um, part two, animal chain. And let me collapse. There we go. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and run this and see what the program does. It says, player one, it's your turn. You must think of an animal name that begins with B. Um, and your animal name must not end in the following letters, which is B. Um, I need a B animal. Bunny? All right, so then player two would pick a letter that begins with, or sorry, an animal that begins with Y, and then it cannot end in a B or a Y. I'm going to have to use Google. Aha. A yak. Okay, and then player one. A K, but it can't end in those letters. So I'm going to say kangaroo. And there it continues and continues and it continues. Orang, uh, tang. And then N. Um, I'm going to go with a newt. And so with a T, I'm going to say tiger. And now an R. Ooh. Um, oh, a rag doll for a rag doll cat. Rag doll. And, oh, an L, because my first thought was a lemur. Anyway, you can see where this is going to go on and on and on until you run out of things that you can do. <coughs> Excuse me. So this program <coughs> excuse me, plays a game where you have to name an animal, but your animal has to start with the letter that the last person's ended with, and you can't repeat letters. So as we experimented with this, um, I want you to think about what the data in this program 
um, or sorry, what data in this program is stored in a, as a list? What do you think? It's basically the set of letters that you've used. So what data is stored as strings? That is the current letter and the user's input animal. And what, do you, what operations do you recognize from using lists that are used on strings in this program? Well, you have length, L-E-N, and getting something at an index to help you in the program. Let me go back. Okay, so first vocab word is character. And a character is simply a single letter, number, punctuation mark, or symbol represented as a string. And in order to talk about strings in this new way, we're going to need a few extra terms. This is one of them. So in some programming languages, characters are treated as their own data type. But in Python, characters are still strings. They're just strings that are one symbol long. So <clears throat> here we have a visualization. We have a password, practice, and you see the index for each letter of the word practice. A character is essentially one element from a string. As with list elements, we can track where it is in the larger string by its index position. It's important to know that spaces also count as characters, even though you don't see a visual letter, a space still takes up an index position in a string. So, with the ability to treat a string as a set of individual characters, there are several collection operations that we could do on lists that we are now able to do on strings as well. These include using a for each loop to go through each character one at a time, finding the number of characters in a string with len, length, and getting a character at a specific index with the square bracket notation, including negative indexes. So let's go ahead and try some things here. We're going to open up the part three. And I'm going to close that up. All right. So we're going to translate a string into a series of special characters and numbers. This sort of translation is pretty common when making passwords because it allows you to include non-letter characters while still having a word that you can remember. For letters that don't have a good number or symbol equivalent, we'll translate them into an uppercase version just so we can be sure that we correctly change the value. To do this, we need to go through every letter in the word, find its translation from the letters string to the replacement string, and then put it in the new string. First, how do we go through every element in a collection one by one? Well, we use a for loop. So right here um, on line 17, uh, well, first off, note the two collections up here, okay? But on line 17, I'm going to say for letter in Word. That's going to be how I start my loop. Now, we are getting all the letters. If this were a list, how would we find the index position of the letter in letters? And that would be by using the actual index method. Index also works with strings, so let's do that. We're going to add a single, um, a single line of code inside the loop. And that is going to be position equals letters.index letter. Now that we have an index number corresponding to where this letter is in the alphabet, how should we use this to get an element out of replacements? And we would do that by using the index in the square brackets. So we're going to add another line in this loop. And 
and we're going to say new letter equals replacements position. Finally, we have to add this letter onto the end of new word, which you see is empty. How would we do this with a list? Well, we'd use append. So we're going to try append and see if what happens with this collection. So I'm going to put new word dot append new letter. And then we're going to run the code. And it asks to enter a word to translate. I'm going to say dog. And I get an error message. And it says, str object has no attribute append. Um, the error says that the string data type has no attribute called append, attribute called append meaning it doesn't recognize the app append operation. So let's pause our coding for a moment to talk about why that is. So as we just saw, there are some collection operations that you can do with lists that you can't do with strings. This is because strings have a special property that lists don't have. The word immutable shares a root with the word mutation, meaning change. So immutable means not able to change. Unlike strings, or sorry, unlike lists, strings are immutable, which means that once you make a string, its characters will always be the same and cannot be changed. Make sure you add this to your vocab. So this limits the collection operations we can do. Any operations that we did on lists where the list was changed in place do not apply to strings. For instance, replacing a character at a specific index, appending characters, removing characters, and so on. So, but what about these operators, don't they change strings? No, they are expressions that make new strings. Anytime you want to change a string variable, what you actually need to do is make a brand new string that is slightly different than, and then assign it to the old variable. In general, if you're not sure whether an operation you've done with lists applies to strings, think first about whether or not that operation would try to change the string. Let's use our concatenation operator to find the code we, uh, we are writing here. So we're going to go back to our part three. And um, can we write just new word plus new letter? Oops. There we go. No, you can't do that. You need to, you would need to 